Hello everyone, today we're going to be solving the room cleaning robot problem which may seem a little bit tricky at the beginning but once you get the idea behind it you'll find how easy it is. So let's start with the basics and the given to us. So the problem says that you will have an interface which is called a robot. This interface can perform a couple of actions which is turn left or turn right move and clean so for example if we have a room that is just as square as this one and our robot is here this robot can move forward which is this one or it can tell us that it cannot move for example when it's here it cannot move further it can turn right like for example like this so it can turn right and let's say that we move again at this point we can either turn right and go down just move again or for example turn left and let's say turn left again and move forward so this is like turning right left and of course one thing which is the base of this whole problem, which is cleaning. Like I can clean this square, clean this square, clean this square, clean this square, and so on and so forth. So before jumping into the problem solution, let's study some of the basic concepts and see how can we solve this problem. So usually when you see that you have a matrix, like this case, like the room, you don't know, the room, you have no idea how big it is, or whether we have some obstacles on the way or not. So we have to write an algorithm that will make sure that we'll be exploring through the room. We stop whenever we see that there's an obstacle and we cannot move forward, and we shouldn't clean one square more than one time. So again, let's take one step behind and study some of the basics. So I'll start by wiping out what I've written here. So. Ideally, every matrix problem is a graph. So let's study a little bit of the graph and then we go back and see how we can solve the problem. So let's assume that we have a graph that looks like this. We have one node here, and here is the next node, and here is another node, and here is another node. And let's assume that the graph is circular graph, like this. And let's assume that we are starting from here. Okay, and I would like to do a depth first search. So ideally what we would do is, from this point, let's explore all the branches. So we start with this one. So we explore this one. And then when we're here, we explore the next one, which is this one. And from here we explore the next one, which is this one. And from here we try to explore more, but we'll find that we have visited this one already. So since we usually write depth first search with recursion, so the recursion will return here, will return here, return here, return here. And this one will start exploring the next branch, which is this one. It starts exploring it and it will find that this one has been visited already. So we stop here and we've done exploring the whole graph. There is one big difference between depth first search when it looks like a software problem like this and when it involves hardware movement. So in this case, imagine that the robot is really moving from here to here. You cannot just assume that your recursion will return back. Instead, you have to flip the robot like this and go back physically. If your robot arrived here, so it means that it moved all the way here, rotated, moved all the way here, rotated again, moved all the way here, rotated and maybe tried to visit this one, found that it's not possible anymore because we have visited this one as we started with. So it has to rotate back, move all the way, rotate, move all the way, rotate, and arrive back here. So this is one concept in the problem. And the next concept is we have to always track what's the direction of the robot. Because in the problem, the robot can only move forward. It cannot move backward or sideways. 
So for example, <clears throat> if I would like to go this way in order to return back, I have to rotate 90 degrees, rotate again 90 degrees, move one step forward, and then realign myself to start from the to return to the starting position. So I rotate again 90 degrees and rotate once more 90 degrees. So these two concepts of returning physically and always tracking the direction of the robot are core functions to the solution of our problem. So again, I will wipe this one and we return back to our problem. Let's start the problem by drawing a virtual room and let's assume this is our room. So let's assume that we have kind of a square room that looks something like this. And we'll split this room into small blocks where the robot will be able to, to clean one block at a time. So let's assume that we'll split it into 16 equal blocks. So let's start by something like this, 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 and we'll split it into 16 blocks. And to make the problem a bit more realistic, let's assume that we'll have some obstacles or some areas where the robot can't move in. So let's assume that these two blocks here are just two obstacles or the robot for some reason cannot move in. And let's have one more random, like let's say this corner block, the robot will not be able to visit. So the next step is given in the problem that the robot will always start facing forward or upwards. So let's assume that this is the front side of the room. This is the back side, this is the left and the right. So our robot is going to be starting somewhere here, always facing upward or forward. And in order to clean the room, one thing that is really critical is that at any given point in time, we need to track the position of the robot on the X and Y axis, as well as the direction. Like, is it facing forward or sideways? Like, for example, to the right, left, or to the bottom. In order to, to keep track of all of these positions, let's introduce a couple of variables. So let's say R will be an indication to the rotation of the robot, and X would be the X position, Y will be the Y or the vertical position of the robot. And for the sake of simplicity, let's put some values for each of the blocks. In the problem, since you won't know how big the room is, then you can just assume that the robot is starting at, let's say, point 100 and 100 or 10 and 10 or 0 and 0. It's, it's totally up to you. Just make sure that if you move, if you start at 0 and 0, and you move, let's say, to the left, then you should always in decrease x by 1. So if this is 0, then this is going to be negative 1, negative 2, negative 3, and so on. Same goes for y axis. Just for the sake of simplicity and for you to understand, I will just assume that the positions are as follows, like this is block 0, 1, 2, 3. That's the x axis. And here, same, y, 0, 1, 2, 3. And that's the y axis. And again, for the sake of simplicity, I will assume that directions are as follows. So here we have rotated 0 degrees, here 90 degrees, here 180, and here we have rotated to 70 degrees. So we'll start, since the robot will start facing upwards, it's going to be starting at 0. X is going to be starting at, let's say, 1 in this situation, and Y will also be starting at 1. Add one more variable, is going to be tracking the combination of X and Y. In this case, I'll call it P, which is the position. And it's going to be a concatenation, a string concatenating X and Y with uh, a joiner character over there. So in this case, it's going to be starting at 1 underscore, let's say, 1, where this one is the X and this, is what, this one is the Y. <coughs> so one more thing that we haven't written here is that we need to keep track of which block we have cleaned so far, which blocks we have cleaned so far. And since we don't know what the size of the room is, I could always start thinking by 
let's create a multi-dimensional array of integers but it's gonna be a bit tricky to keep expanding the array we can create let's say a list but for the sake of simplicity again and since we'll be always concatenating the position into a string we can maybe create a hash set or a hash map I will be representing this here as a table let's say it's just a, a big table here and this is gonna be always be uh, representing hash set of the position I'll be writing in these rows every time I visit a block and I find that it's cleaned or not and it's gonna be based on this hash set so let's uh, let's start our problem so we'll be doing a recursion every time we visit the method first thing is to check have we visited this one and cleaned before if not then let's clean it let's mark the block as cleaned and let's start visiting all the sub branches of that given block so let's start here we start by visiting the function that we'll be writing later we will check where are we we are still at one and one because we haven't moved yet we initialize our position variable which is going to be x underscore y which is one and one in this case and we will check in this hash set have we cleaned this block since the hash set is completely empty at the beginning then no we'll find that we haven't cleaned this block then we start cleaning it so i will put a tick here this one is now cleaned and let's put this one in the hash set so i will put here one underscore one next step is to visit all the possible four branches how we will do that so i'm here at this position i will visit this branch when i'm done visiting all the sub branches using dfs i will visit i will rotate next visit the next branch rotate visit the next branch rotate visit the next branch and reset back to where i was when i find that i've done visiting all the branches i will return that's going to be the return condition from the recursion and i'll be done in this case of course since this is our starting block this will return the result of the problem and we'll know at this point that we're done visiting all possible blocks in our in our problem and we'll be done by then let's see how it will work so the first thing that we mentioned is we'll be cleaning after checking whether we have cleaned this one or not second thing is let's move forward and visit everything in this branch here that we have moved one step up you will see that the y has decreased by one now our y became zero correct and our position variable became one underscore zero we look up in the hash set do we have one underscore zero no we don't then we put it here one underscore zero we trigger a clean which will clean this one and we do the next recursion so this one is supposed to move to the start exploring this branch so let's start let's try to move forward the robot will tell us no i cannot move forward because it's either out of bounds of the room or there is an obstacle or like you can say that there is a wall here and you cannot move forward so the next thing will be let's rotate 90 degrees and let's visit the next branch so in this case we rotate 90 degrees and we move forward because we're going to be calling the recursion for that specific branch so the next call will be moving here which will move our x from 1 to 2 so in this case our x position will be 2 our concatenated variable indicating the position will be 2 underscore 0 we look up on the hash set do we have 2 underscore 0 no we don't then we take this one as cleaned 2 underscore 0 and in our code we will trigger clean so what's the next step again we'll be exploring this branch in this case so we move one step forward our x became three it's gonna be three our y is still at zero so this is gonna be three underscore zero and we check do we have three underscore zero here no so we put it here three underscore zero we mark this one as cleaned and we move forward can we move forward the robot will tell us no you cannot move forward then it's time to rotate 90 degrees clockwise and we move one step forward 
In this case, our x stays at 3, y goes back to 1. Our position variable became 3 underscore 1. We check, do we have this one? No, we don't. Then we put 3 underscore 1 in the list of cleaned blocks. We take this one as cleaned and we move forward. Can we move forward? The robot will tell us no, you cannot move forward. So we're done exploring this branch. And then we move 90 degrees. And then we take one step forward. And we move one step forward. Our x went back to 2. So we change it here. 2. Our position became 2 underscore 1. Do we have 2 underscore 1 here? No. Then we mark it as let's clean it. Let's put here 2 underscore 1. And we move forward. So the next, next step where it becomes a little bit tricky. Can we move forward? Yes, we can. So the robot will be moving forward. Our position became now 1 and 1 again. 1 and here also 1 again. Let's check in the hash table. Do we have 1 and 1? Yes, we have. Then we know that we have cleaned this one already. And how do we go back? We have to end this recursion. So what we'll do here is rotate anti-clockwise one time, rotate anti-clockwise one more time, move forward one step, and then ro rotate clockwise one time, rotate clockwise one more time, and we're done with exploring this branch. So we entered into this block, we tried to explore this branch, we found that we cannot because it's already cleaned and we're done and it's time to move to the next step which is rotate 15 degrees and let's explore this next branch. We again go to this one, our position will become 2 at x and 0 at y, so this is going to be 2 and 0, our x is 2, our y is 0. Do we have that 2 and 0 here? Yes, we do. Then we know that we cannot clean this one, then it's time to go back, which is again, rotate anti-clockwise one time, anti-clockwise one time, move one step forward, Anti uh, clockwise one time, clockwise one more time, and we're done exploring this branch, which is this one. So now back to the third step, which is rotate one more time. Try to explore this one. We'll try to explore it. We'll find that it's clean. So we'll go back, rotate two times, go back, rotate, rotate, and we're done exploring this branch. Okay. So the fourth step would be rotate for the fourth time. Sorry, rotate for the third time because we entered here. We rotated one time, we rotated two times, three times. This is the third one. We try to move forward. We cannot. So we just go back and ending this branch. And we, we rotate for the fourth time. Once we rotate for the fourth time, we know that this block has been completely discovered and it's time to go back to the other block which will lead to going to the end of the recursion. And the end of the recursion is always rotate anti-clockwise one time, anti-clockwise two times, step forward, rotate clockwise, rotate clockwise, and we're done exploring this one. So if you remember, we entered to this block in this position. We found that we cannot explore this one, so that's, that's done. We rotated one time. We explored everything in this branch. We rotate one more time and try to explore everything in this branch. So if we will go forward, again, we'll find that we have cleaned this one. So we'll immediately skip and go back, keep and go back, we rotate, rotate again, and we're done with this branch. One more time, we're done with this branch, and fourth time, and we're done with this one. And the robot will keep going backward, 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 until it's back into this position. Because if you remember, we entered this way, we cannot explore this direction, so we tried this direction and went all the way and we found that after completing all of these blocks, the robot will return back to exactly this position. So we're done exploring only this branch when it comes to this block. Now the next step is rotate clockwise 90 degrees, try to step forward. So we go forward, we found that this one is cleaned, 
So we'll reset back and we're done with this branch. Rotate 90 degrees again. Try to step forward. So we step forward in this case. And we'll find that at this position, X is at 1, Y is at 2. So let's write that. X is at 1, Y is at 2. Our current position combined as a string is 1 underscore 2 in this case. Let's look up here. Do we have 1 underscore 2? No, we don't. Then let's add it. 1 underscore 2. And let's mark this one as cleaned. Let's move forward. So we move one step forward. And we find that our current position is x is still at 1, y is at 3. So let's modify this a little bit. It's 3. And here it's also 3. Do we have 1 underscore 3? No, we don't. Then let's add it. 1 underscore 3. And then we mark this one as cleaned. Could we move forward? No, we cannot. So this branch is completed. Let's rotate clockwise 90 degrees. Could we move forward? Yes, we can. So we move forward. What is the current position? X is at 0, Y is at 3. So let's change that to X is at 0. The position string is 0 underscore 3. Let's find it here. We don't have 0 underscore 3 in our hash set. Then let's put it 0 underscore 3. And let's mark this one as cleaned. Let's move forward. So we try to move forward here. The robot will tell us I cannot move forward. So we're done with this branch. And let's rotate 90 degrees. Can we move forward? Yes. So the robot will move forward here. Our current position is going to be 0x and 2y. So we change this back to just 2. This one is back to 0 underscore 2. Do we have 0 underscore 2 here? No, we don't. So we put here 0 underscore 2 and mark this one as cleaned. Let's move one step forward. Now the position is 0 underscore 1. So our y became 1. Our y here is also 1. Do we have this in the position? No. In the cleaned list? No. Then we put one, 0 underscore 1. And we mark this one as cleaned. And let's move forward again. So we move one step up. We cannot. So we know that this branch is complete. And then let's rotate 90 degrees. We we'll rotate 90 degrees and then we move one step forward. Can we move? Yes, we can. So we are at this position where it's one and one again. So our position is back to one and one. Here and here. Let's check. Do we have one and one? Yes, we have one and one. Then we cannot clean this one. So what should we do then? We go to the very end of the recursion, which is rotate one time anticlockwise, one more time anticlockwise move one step forward and then rotate one time clockwise, one time clockwise, and we're done exploring this branch. Then what do we do next? We rotate 90 degrees. So we rotate 90 degrees and then we move one step forward. At this position now it's zero and two. So it's like one thing I forgot to mention here is that every time you recurse back, you have to decrease the inverse value of your direction. So for example, if I'm here and I found that this one is clean and I'm currently at position zero and two, zero and two, then one thing I know for sure is that when I will go back and I know that my direction is currently, let's say, 180 degrees, if I will go back, then it means that I will decrease y by 1. So I don't just rotate, rotate and go back, but I will also decrease y by 1. So when I go back here, I will decrease this by 1. And you will see this later when we write the code. It's going to be quite easy. Here just I don't want to mention because it's going to be a bit confusing. So what do we do next? So this one is completely explored and we're back to zero and one 
So, next step is rotate clockwise 90 degrees, which is this one. We try to go here. The robot will tell us I cannot go further. Then this branch is complete. And then we rotate for the fourth time and we're done exploring this block. What's gonna happen next is that the robot has to go back, which is the end of the recursion, which is gonna be always rotate 90 degrees, rotate 90 degrees, one step, rotate 90 degrees, rotate 90 degrees, and we're done. So we entered this block in this direction, we completely explored this branch, and it's time to take the next 90 degrees. So we rotate 90 degrees, we try to move here, we found that this one is clean, then we'll go back and we'll mark this as complete. We rotate again 90 degrees, we try to move to this block, we'll find that it's already clean, so we'll go back, rotate, rotate, one step forward, and then rotate, rotate again, and we find that this one is also complete. One more time, and we find that this one is also complete, because we cannot move to the left, and we reset back to this one. Since we're done with all sideways of this block, then it's time to recurse and go back, which is rotate 90 degrees, rotate again 90 degrees, move forward, rotate 90 degrees, rotate 90 degrees, and we're done exploring this end. So we entered this square in this direction. We've, we completed this side, completed this side. It's time to rotate 90 degrees and try to complete this side. We'll move here. We'll find that this one is already cleaned. So we'll rotate 90 degrees, 90 degrees, back. 90 degrees, 90 degrees, and we're done with this. So this side is also complete. We rotate one more time as 90 degrees. Can we move forward? No, we cannot. So this side way is done, and we rotate for the fourth time. So we entered like this, rotated one time, two times, three times, and this is the fourth time. So we're done completely with this square, and it's time to recurse back, which is rotate, rotate, Again, step forward, rotate, and rotate again. So we're done completely with this side. We were done already with this side. Now we're done with this side. It's time to rotate 90 degrees. Can we move forward? Yes, we can move forward, but we'll find that this one is clean. So we'll immediately jump to the very end of the recursion, which is rotate, rotate, one step, rotate, rotate, and we're done also with this side. What's the next step is, let's try to rotate 90 degrees and move forward. We move forward in this case, and we'll find that at this position we are at two, uh, x is two, and y is three. Let's write it here, and here as well. So x is at position two, y is at three, our String is two underscore three. Let's look it up here. Do we have two underscore three? No, we don't. Then we write here two underscore three. And we mark this one as cleaned. What's next? You know it, we move forward. So we move forward, starting to explore this branch. At what position are we now? It's three and three. So we clean by now, sorry, x becomes three. X becomes three. And here in the concatenated version of the position, it's also three underscore three. Let's look it up. Do we have, do we have three underscore three here? No, we don't. Then we put here three underscore three, and we mark it here on our board as cleaned. So what happens next? We try to, to move forward again. We'll find that we cannot move forward because it's either out of bounds or there is an obstacle. So we mark this as complete. We rotate 90 degrees. Can we go move forward? No, we cannot. Then we're done with this branch. Rotate 90 degrees. Can we go forward? Yes, we can. We'll go here. We find that this one is already clean. So we go to the end of the recursion. We rotate, rotate again, move forward and rotate one more time, rotate two times, and we know that we're done with this branch. So we rotate for, so we started here, rotated one time, rotated two times, and this is the third time. Can we move forward? We cannot move forward. Then 
this branch is complete. And then we rotate for the fourth time and we know that we're done with this block. It's time to recurse. So one way, one more time, we go back, rotate, rotate, and we're done with this branch completely. So this branch is done for us. Let's rotate the first time, 90 degrees. Can we move forward? No, we cannot. Then simply we will just mark this one as complete. Rotate one more time. Can we move forward? Yes, we can. So we take one step forward. Is it clean? It's already clean. Then it's time to end the recursion. We go back with rotation. We go here and this one is complete. We mark this one as this side is complete. Then we rotate 90 degrees. Let's try to explore this side. Can we? No, we cannot because it's blocked. Then this side is complete and we rotate it for the fourth time. So this block we entered this direction, rotated one time, two times, three times, and this is the fourth time. Now it's time to end the recursion, which will bring us back here. So, and this side is also complete. So here we started this direction, rotated one time, rotated two times, rotated three times, and it's time for the final rotation. And we're done completely with this block. So this block will bring us back to this one. And this one means that this side is completed. It's time to rotate within this block 90 degrees. So we do this way. We go here, we'll find that it's already clean. So we'll go back and this will be complete. Rotate for the second time. We started this way, first time, second rotation. And then we'll go here, we'll find that it's already clean. We'll go back and find that this one is complete. Third time. Cannot go here, so this also is complete. And then fourth time, and we're done with the recursion. Now it's time to go back, which will like rotate, rotate, move upward, rotate, rotate, and we're done with this side. To keep track of this one, we started at the very beginning, facing upwards. We explored all the way here, and we're done with this side of the block. And then we tried to go to the second side after rotating just one time. We found that immediately that this one is already clean, so we're done with this one and we went back. We rotate it for the second time. We tried to explore the bottom side. We completely explored it and it's done for us. So we started here one time, two times. Let's rotate for the third time. We will go here, we'll find that it's already cleaned. So we will go back and we rotate for the fourth time and we're completely done with our problem. So let's see how we can write code that will represent the movement that we have shown here. Let's see you next. Okay, so now that we have seen how we can move the robot around, let's write some code and see how easy the problem will be. So, it's given to us in the original problem is that the solution will be calling one method, which is a void. So right here, void, clean, rule. And we'll have only one parameter, which is going to be the robot. Robot, I will refer to it as R. So what this method will do is that it will be calling the depth first search. And this depth first search will keep cleaning, cleaning, cleaning until it exits. So how we will do that? Let's start by creating this method first. So our method, let's for simplicity call it DFS. And let's send some variables. The first thing that we always need to send is R, which is our robot. Next thing is our X and Y position, which starts, let's say, for simplicity, I will start with 0 and 0 in this case. But this means that if I'm not at the very far end on the left and far end at the top, I will have to go negatives, but we really don't care. As long as we can concatenate unique strings, then we can go to maybe negative infinity or possibly like negative min int. So x, y, also one thing is important as a parameter is the direction, which is going to be zero as well. And the last thing that we'll have here is going to be hash set, which is going to be carrying all the cleaned values. So in this case, I'll be just creating a new hash set, new hash set of type string and I'll be sending it as is. Once this 
Depth's first search is complete. We'll be sure that our room was completely cleaned. So how will our method depth first search look like? It's gonna be again, just a void. So let's write here, void. It's gonna be called DFS as we have called it here. Here we'll have X, Y, direction, and for simplicity, let's call it cleaned as just C. So void DFS, it will take initially robot, which is R, and then integer X, integer Y, integer y and integer direction and set of string c. So how will this one look like? So the first thing that I would like to do here is to create our variable because as we mentioned here, once I enter to any position, the first thing is I need to check whether I have already cleaned this block or not. So let's write some code to concatenate it. Let's say I will be initializing a string p, which is equal to concatenation of x plus, let's say, underscore plus y. Next step is to check whether the cleaned blocks contains this current position. So if c dot contains my current position, P, then I will return right away. I don't need to do anything. Return. Next thing is, I need to clean that. So if it's not already clean, then I first need to clean it. R dot clean. And I need to add it as well to the list of clean to, to be able to check it later. So C dot add my current position. So, so far, we just have the exit condition for the recursion. I enter somewhere, I find that it's already cleaned, and then it's time to exit immediately. The next thing is, I entered something, it's not clean. I went here, I need to explore the four branches of any given block. So in order to do that, since there are always four branches, I cannot go in diagonals. I will always be going up, right, left, or down. Then I will have a for loop, which is going to be for, let's say, int n equals 0, n is less than 4, n plus plus. And this will be looping on the four directions. Every time it will be rotating 90 degrees. So you'll see at the very end of this for loop, I have to be, I have to rotate 90 degrees. Uh, um, I'll have to return 90 degrees clockwise in this case, or anti-clockwise. It's, it's again based on your preference. I just chose to always rotate clockwise. And the first thing that I need to do here is to check if I can move in that direction or not. Okay, so let's see if I can move actually in that direction. And since the robot provides this functionality out of the box, I will start here by if my robot r dot move, if I can move, then I need to do the calculation and then everything for the next block. If I cannot move, however, then it's time to rotate 90 degrees and go back. So at the very, very end, the end of this, let's say, braces will be something like this. And then I will tell the outer loop, outer loop, rotate somehow, or like 90 degrees. I will fix this later, so just 90 degrees, and then I'll go to the next rotation, try to move 
next rotation, try to move, and so on and so forth. So what should I write here? We agreed that we need to keep track of the position. So one thing I will have here is to initialize values for the next position. Let's for, again, sake of simplicity, write it. Let's use the same color. So it's, I'll say, int next x equals, initially it's just the current x. We don't know which direction, so we don't know whether to increase or decrease x or increase or decrease y. And next y is going to be initially just the current y. And let's do a switch on the direction. So let's have here switch on the direction. Why do we need to switch on the direction? Because if you're moving upwards, for example, then we'll be decreasing y by 1. Downwards, increasing y by 1. To the right, increasing x by 1. To the left, decreasing x by 1. So one of them will stay as is, and the other will always change. So we need to switch just to see if it's going to be plus or minus 1 or plus or minus 1 here. So let's start with the base case, which is like case 0. In this case, we know that we're going upwards, which means that y will be y minus 1. So our next y is going to be minus equal 1. Case and I need here to break for sure. Case 90 degrees means that we are going in this direction. Then in this, in this case, our next x is going to be plus equals 1. And then break. The next case is going to be case 180 degrees. Then we're going in downwards. Then our next y plus plus. And we also break here. Our last case is case 270, which means that we're going to the left. In this case, our x will be decreased by 1. So our next x minus minus so now we're done with determining the next direction so what we'll be writing next is the recursion which is do depths depths first search with our current r with our next x next x with our next y with our, our current direction because we haven't rotated yet current direction and our current clean set which is here very good so once we're done with this branch this branch will keep going 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 all the way until it's done completely with branch where one of the blocks will find that all of its surroundings are already cleaned so it has to go back in this case, we need to end the recursion, which we were talking about here. You move upwards, and once you're done, you rotate, rotate, one step forward, then rotate, rotate. doesn't matter whether you rotate right or left. What really matters here is that, for example, if you rotate right, right, and go one step forward, then rotate left, left, just to make sure that the end rotation of the robot is always the same. Because if you rotate, for example, right, right, down, then right, right, then the robot has completed one full rotation. Maybe this internally triggers something in the robot, but we're not really interested in this at the moment. So in this case, I will be doing, just after completion of this depth first search, I will be doing r dot turn left. Let's do it one more time. r dot turn left. And then r dot move. And then r dot turn right then r dot 
after right and at this point we're completely done with the first rotation so what do we need to write here we said that we'll keep this to the next step it's going to be really easy and this is actually the last piece of code in our function we're done completely with exploring that branch we're still at n0 so now it's time to move to the next branch so our robot here, for example, was facing in this direction. We explored, let's say, this whole branch. The next thing is to rotate 90 degrees clockwise. So how we'll be doing that? Let's do here our new direction will be plus equals 90 degrees. But that's just the variable. We need to rotate the robot itself. So we do robot dot turn right in this case and the next thing is to normalize the direction because there's a chance that it's 0 90 degrees 180 270 and then it's going to be 360 again but we don't want to see 360 because we don't have a case for it here then our direction will always be normalized to equals dire mod 360 and that's actually the very end of our code. And we need also to close the function here. And let's walk through this code and see if it really works. So let's assume that I start here. Actually, let me clean this a little bit just to avoid the confusion. Let's assume that our position is here are going to be just like in the problem which is going to be I start at 1 and 1 this is going to be sorry I start at 0 and 0 is going to be 1 2 it's going to be 1 2 it's going to be negative 1 negative 1 and whether we have 1 negative 1 or whatever doesn't really matter let's wipe out this one completely so we start with a completely empty hash set. Okay. So what we'll be having here is we start at position one and one. We check, do we have anything in the hash set? No, we don't have anything in the hash set. Then this condition will not be met in the first case. We clean at that position and we add it to the, what we have. So we start with one and one, okay. We enter into this loop. So the robot is still facing upward. We check, can we move forward? Yes, then the move, the robot will immediately move here, but we haven't let yet recursed. We check at which direction we're going. We find that we are going upwards. If it's upwards, then we're going to be matching this case first, which means that our next y is going to be y minus 1. So we started with 1 and 1. Our next y is going to be... Sorry, 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 sorry. I confused it here. I'm sorry. We started at 0 underscore 0 and we move upward. So the next position is going to be 0 and negative 1. So here we'll match this case. We're going upward as the direction is still at angle 0. Reduce y by 1. We call the depth first search and the next recursion will be called this next x, which is going to be the current x, which is 0. But the next y is going to be y minus 1. Direction is still the same. Our clean list is still the same. So the next one is going to start here. P equals 0 underscore negative 1. Do we have it? No, we don't. We haven't cleaned it yet. Then we have 0 underscore negative 1. It's a string, so it doesn't matter whether you can contenate negative numbers or positive numbers. We try to move forward. Like so we cleaned, we added it to the list. Then we try to enter for this block. N is still at 0. We try to move forward, but the robot will tell us, no, I cannot move forward. Then we will go all the way outside of this if condition and we'll do rotation by 90 degrees. So what's going to happen here is that we'll rotate exactly 90 degrees and we'll have the new direction, which is going to be 90. Let's make sure this is rotated well. And we go to the next loop. 
n in this case becomes 1 instead of 0. We try to move. Can we move forward? Yes, we can move forward. Then it will enter this condition. We know that our next x is going to be so far the same x, y the same y. We go to the switch. In this case, we'll hit the second case, which is 90 degrees, which is going to increase our next x by 1. So we we're currently at, um, after calling this one, we we're currently at 0 and negative 1. Our next x is going to be 0. Sorry, uh, is going to be 1 and negative 1. So here we'll call the next x and next y. And we'll go to the next loop for this block. We enter into this block with 1 and negative 1. We'll check, do we have it here? No, we don't have it here. Then it's going to be 1 underscore negative 1. And we'll proceed all the way till we finish the problem. So, thank you again for following up this. I strongly recommend that you, after watching the initial tutorial, you try to write the code by yourself. You'll get a much better understanding. And in all cases, I'll be sharing with you a code that simulates the movement of the robot as well as the solution for the problem. Thank you very much and happy coding.